Good morning. This morning is the second Sunday in the season of Easter. In these uh, Sundays following uh, Easter, the resurre- morning of the resurrection, we get uh, records of Jesus' post-resurrection uh, appearances. Uh, this morning uh, we have Jesus appearing in the uh, upper room, and um, we have, uh, so for our worship today, we have all the usual components. We're fortunate still to have a, a piece from the uh, Renaissance Stink String Quartet. Um, they'll be uh, performing for us during this service. And also, uh, Ron Bonstetter uh, has uh, recorded a, a flute solo, which will be included in the service. And uh, as a special guest this morning, uh, the bishop, uh, Deborah Hutter, has recorded a sermon for us this morning. Uh, I think that uh, she it was feeling that her pastors in the Grand Canyon Synod were feeling a little beleaguered and she thought she'd give us a little break. Uh, I'm happy to offer you uh, her reflections on this morning's gospel text. So with that, why don't we all settle in and enjoy this time of worship. Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gives us birth, the light of our salvation. Amen. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and the healing light of God. O God of grace and glory, you You have have brought brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all of creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Praise be to God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. <laughs> Lord, you are my portion 
and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It is good to be here with you. I bring greetings on behalf of Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, as well as the Grand Canyon Synod staff. You have been in our thoughts and our prayers during these unusual times. Some of you know that one of the goals of the Office of the Bishop is that our rostered leaders would visit every congregation within the first year and a half of when I became Bishop, which was September of 2018. And by the grace of God, we achieved that goal. My personal goal was that I would get to visit every congregation by the time I'd been installed for two years. It was apparent at the end of last year that logistically it was impossible to be able to reach that goal. However, through the use of technology, I am able to be with you in worship. Well, maybe that doesn't really count. Seriously, I yearn for the day in which we can worship face to face. And then finally, just a thank you to all of you, your pastors and leaders and readers, people who have been adjusting to what it is to worship using iPads and iPhones and computers in ways that you could never have imagined. I am grateful for the ways in which we have all been able to adapt and learn and grow, all the while remembering that we are God's people and continuing to proclaim the message of the risen Christ. The Gospel of the Lord is taken from the 20th chapter of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. 
But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Each year on the eve of my children's birthday, I call and recount in detail their birth stories. I remember when they were younger how much they looked forward to that. And when they became teenagers, they would roll their eyes. And now as they've become older, I think they've appreciated the story even a little bit more. I find that they'll remind me of the details that I have forgotten or that I have glossed over. We're story people. We like to hear and tell stories. When you tell your story, it connects with experiences and people in my life. We tell stories to create meaning in the good times and the not so good times. We tell stories so that we can laugh at ourselves. We tell stories so that we might have courage and be brave. We tell stories so that we might have hope. That's what the Bible is full of, stories of God and God's people. It is the story of who we are and to whom we belong, and these are stories that sustain faith. I don't know if there's a more perfect time than for this gospel story. It is the evening of the day of resurrection, and the disciples were in a room with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. And Jesus comes and stands among them and says, Peace be with you. And then he showed them his hands and his side. We can only imagine what they might be feeling as they saw those visible wounds. But again, Jesus says, Peace be with you and breathes on them the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thomas wasn't there, and without seeing for himself, he said he couldn't believe. And when Jesus comes back a week later and offers Thomas the opportunity to touch those wounds, he sees Jesus, and all he can say is, My Lord and my God. And Jesus responds by saying, Blessed are those who believe and have not yet seen. We understand fear all too well. There has always been something in our life that we can be fearful of. This year, we have some kind of communal fear. We are behind locked doors for the fear of spreading or catching COVID. We fear as we watch the numbers of deaths, as we wonder about available hospital beds and medical equipment and personal protection. We fear for our jobs and the economy. And fear, as it always does, keeps us paralyzed and locked up behind closed doors and inside ourselves. And we, like those first disciples, can wonder, is Jesus really present? There's one thing that seems to be consistent about these post-resurrection stories. There's some kind of honest doubt, some hesitancy to believe, even when hearing the testimony of trusted friends, or even when Jesus is standing right in front of them. That actually should be a comfort for us. And maybe it can be the time when we can confess our doubts and our struggles, our places where it's hard to believe. The third article of both the Apostles and the Nicene Creed speak to this gift of faith. In fact, two of the Holy Spirit's works are to bring faith and to keep us in faith. It is the gift of faith from the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Advocate that Jesus sent, the Holy Spirit that allows us to believe these stories are for us and strengthen us for the work of discipleship. The gift of the Holy Spirit gives us a boldness to testify to the places where we have seen and experienced the risen Christ in our own lives. And into their fear, Jesus breathes on the disciples this gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of peace those familiar words that we exchange in worship, the peace of the Lord be with you. It's not just the absence of war or some place of silence. It's the peace of Jesus that offers the fullness of life and well-being. Peace that leans into our anxiety and our fears, 
so that they no longer have a hold over us. And this is not just a gift for us, it is a gift for all of God's people. The Gospel lesson today concludes with why John captured and recorded these stories when he says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in, these, in this book, but these are recorded so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you might have life in his name. The gift to believe brings life. The two are inextricably linked. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King once wrote, science investigates and religion interprets. Science gives knowledge, which is power. Religion gives wisdom, which is control. Science deals with facts and religion deals with values. The two are not rivals. In this time of COVID-19, we are grateful for the people in science and in medicine, as well as those who do all of the work to support them. They give us physical well-being. Those men and women have offered us directives and guidance so that all may have physical life. And yet we know that not all people have this fullness of life. We know that it's the poor and the vulnerable among us, the homeless, those in nursing homes, those with disabilities, the undocumented workers, the refugees who will be most affected. In fact, even the simple act of hand washing for 20 seconds with clean water and soap is a gift. Many of our brothers and sisters do not have access to some of the most basic needs, but God meant them for all people. As people who are claimed by Jesus, believing and having life guides the way that we live, our values, values that call us to care for our neighbor. I was forwarded an email from one of my ecumenical colleagues that said, if you get an email that begins with knock, knock in the subject line, don't answer it. It's a Jehovah's Witness who's working from home. Now for Lutheran Christians who happen to be shy about sharing their faith, our brothers and sisters can model something for us to follow. We are called to witness to God's love for the world through our actions as well as through our words so that we all have life. You witness to new life as you try to understand new technologies with computers and tablets and iPads that connect you to your church and your neighborhood and to your families. You witness to new life as you take on the role of being a teacher for children who are now at home. You witness to new life as you make and wear face masks, as you deliver food or check in on those who are near and far away. You witness to new life as you share your financial resources so that we might do ministry in our neighborhoods and in the wider world. Your gifts to your congregation are also shared with the Grand Canyon Synod so that we might support local ministries like Lutheran Social Services of Nevada and Lutheran Social Services of the Southwest, as well as with the wider church where we support Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, and World Hunger. We support those who we see right next to us as well as those who can be invisible because we know that God wants abundant life for them as well. God uses the gifts that you've been given, lets you share them so that you can be a blessing. And friends, we bring new life by telling our resurrection stories, the stories where God has brought new life to you. In these days of being surrounded by the very grim and real stories of COVID-19, we're also among the just regular day-to-day -day places in life where friends and family battle cancer or depression or addiction, we still live with those just day-to-day -day places of brokenness and loss. And we need resurrection stories to remind us that fear and anxiety and death do not win. We are Easter people. The risen Christ comes to us today and breathes on us the gifts of forgiveness and hope and new life through our doing and our telling. And the breath of Jesus is the same peace that he gave the first disciples.
the peace of God that passes all understanding, to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Now let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, for the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect our differences and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made so that living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O God. To those who live without a homeland or a place of safety, we pray that generous nations would offer refuge and peace for all. In the, this time, when the whole world is harassed by this coronavirus, we pray for all who are ill, all who are grieving the loss of loved ones, for all whose livelihoods are threatened. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O oh God, to the cries of those who are in pain. We pray for those who are isolated, not only by this virus, but also those who are isolated through incarceration or addiction or mental illness or chronic suffering, grief. And we pray, Lord, for all who are in need. Hear our prayers, Lord, for those in our midst in need of your care. We pray for Jackie, Katie, George, for Sherry, Jared, Rich, Rod, Ron, Raylan, Anthony, the Cassini family, for Tony, for Joe and Barbara, Laura, Rip, Carol, Richard, Sasha, John, Patsy, Julia, Mary Lou, Julie, Kay, Mary, Mark, Jordan, Lynn, Sarah, Marilyn, Todd, Barb and Dave, Stacy, Scott, Susan, Ruth, Richard. For Donna, Jory and Lester, Mike, the Sarah Johnson and their family, Julie, Joel, for Sandy and Ellen and Aiden, Randy, Joanne, Paul, Humberto, Tom, Karen, Amy, Linda, Tom, Virginia. For Debbie, Dave, Ellen, Patrick, Elaine, John, Maureen, Larry, Lena, Monica, Dr. Pat, Cam, Joe, Tony, Mark, Joel, Jean, Donna, and David. And all of those, Lord, whom we name before you now. For these and all for whom we should pray, we ask a full measure of your healing spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of missionaries and healthcare profession professionals, activists for women and children, relief workers, and especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so with Mary Magdalene 
and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your doing and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed took bread when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me and again after supper he took the cup when he had given thanks he gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me now let us pray together the words which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever.
as he said. Go in peace, share the good news, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia.